Good day everyone, Connor here from CW's Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be having a quick look at how to install Resurrection Remix on your Galaxy S7. So I'm just going to breeze through this, wipe everything, go back to install. Where are we? Resurrection Remix ROM. Swipe. And that's installing. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. Um, I'll be doing lots more videos on the S7 and custom ROMs. Um, it's that time now where the S8 is about to come out, so a lot of people are going to just start flashing ROMs on their S7. And uh, so, yeah, I'll be there and uh, doing it as well, and hopefully providing some advice and help for you guys. A bit of a place to share and communicate. Okay, so that's installed. It says it succeeded and it's done. So I'm just going to wipe cache, Dalvik cache, go back home, go install. I'm going to choose mini dynamic gaps 7.1. Swipe. This doesn't take too long because it is the mini version. So we'll just have a quick look. It says installing dynamic gaps, setting permissions, and complete. Wipe down the cache, reboot system. Let's see how this goes. That boot screen there, by the way, I replaced it. So that's why you see that instead of the Galaxy S7. There's the Resurrection Remix boot screen. All right, so here we go. I just had the infamous vibrate. So it should be set up time right about now. There we go. Let's go. Adding finishing touches. I'm going to go pixel launcher always. And there we have it. So obviously there's no apps there. So I'm going to go install all my apps, come back. Uh, you won't notice it because I'm just going to pause it and then start recording again. But I'm going to install all my stuff, come back, and we'll, I'll let you know if there's been any bugs. Okay, everyone. So here we are. I've set up Resurrection Remix ROM for the Galaxy S7 on my device. I've been running it for a full day and everything is running smooth as butter. I'll just give you a quick rundown on everything. So there's your, um, your app drawer. Everything's nice and smooth there. You got your um, nav, nav bar down the bottom here instead of having to use the hardware keys. Um, so everything is looking pretty cool there. You got your recents button. Everything's flying along there nicely. The camera does work it works pretty smoothly i haven't had too many issues with it whatsoever um, i did have uh, though if i go from if i take a screenshot and go straight to the gallery the gallery freezes but then if i close the gallery and go back into it the screenshot is easy. I can access it and share it and do whatever I have to with it. So there's a couple of little bugs here and there with it, but nothing too major. My experience has been that it's been awesome all day. It's just been super fast, super smooth, really fluid. It's just one thing after another. There you go, your three finger screenshot. And I'll just go and show you quickly. Oh, actually, another little bug I found was that Omni switch isn't working, which is no big deal for me. I don't really care. I mean, I'm happy with recent apps like that. That's fine for me. Um, the settings, I'll just quickly go into the settings. Uh, mobile data is off, turn on. And here's the configurations. So you can see you've got your status bar configurations and there's all the things you can change on it. So we'll go clock and put it in the center. There we go. Brand logo, battery customizations. We've got the circle there. We can make it a solid. Um, whoops. So you can just change everything you want. Then you've got your panels. Notification panel, headers, task manager, volume panel, all that stuff. Your recents button. Clear all. Yes, I want a clear all button and I want it on the bottom left. So if I go in here, there it is, the little X. And close everything. 
So I'll go back into my settings, customizations, recent I was in, quick settings, you can change your quick settings, you can customize your lock screen, you can add gestures, that's where I got the three fingered swipe from. App circle bar I also have installed, which I think is an awesome little feature. Your buttons, that's where you did your nav bar. Animations for the device, its interface, font size, display size, LCD density. So you can just, it just goes on forever, all the custom features you can add to this to make it your own. And also it's it's like stock Android with all these extra features. No bloatware. And the one thing I will say about this, so everyone hypes on about the Pixel phone. Not everyone can just rush out and buy a $1,500 phone or a $1,200 phone. This phone now, the Galaxy S7 with this software on it, has just become the Pixel phone, except that it's waterproof. So you just think about that for a second. Flash and ROMs is still important. The devs that have created this, you know, they've, they luckily they haven't given up and listened to some of the people on YouTube who are saying flashing ROMs isn't important because right now I'm running a Pixel phone yet with the Galaxy S7 hardware and the Galaxy S7 waterproofing. So it can't be beaten. Must, must is uh, having ROMs to flash on our devices. You imagine someone that's got this phone in one year and they go and flash a ROM on it. And then all of a sudden they've got um, Android P or whatever's next in line. Uh, and they're not stuck on this old software. So yeah, it's still very important. And, uh, and you can see that just from this device here. With this custom ROM, it's everything you want. Download it, there's links down below. Make sure you check it out, get amongst it. It's one of the best ROMs I've tried for my S7. A Couple of little bugs here and there, but definitely worth it. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, share all that stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. Check ya.